the Little Campbell River also known as Tatalus is an endangered system. It's located on the shared, asserted, and unceded territories of the Semiami First Nation who reside at the mouth of the river. This stretch of river that flows through the center of the proposal is the prime spawning habitat for coho, chinook, chum, steelhead, and cutthroat trout. Also, one of only 11 streams in the world to host the Salish sucker, thought to be extirpated but discovered in 2011. Simple riparian setbacks are not going to allay damage. The Surrey cannot mitigate the damages they will do with their current plan. Virtually the entire study area is located over the Brookswood Aquifer, a shallow, unconfined aquifer. Rated highly vulnerable to contamination by the province and provides base flow to the river year round. Thousands of people rely on this aquifer for drinking water. Its health relies on water falling into it from permeable areas. New zoning would allow much of the aquifer to be covered with buildings and pavement, surfaces that are almost entirely impermeable. Surrey's own biodiversity conservation strategy isn't being followed. The report also identified potentially 22 taxa of endangered wildlife directly being displaced by developments. Species at risk protection is actually required by law. Biodiversity is declining faster than at any time in human history. Once destroyed for buildings, high biodiversity value loss is absolute. There is no balance. That is a myth. Canadian British Columbia experienced both a heat wave and wildfires this past summer. Now, an atmospheric river. Combine that with climate change is going to make things more extreme. Present plan has city owned forests to be cut in half, incredible carbon sinks degraded. This will produce more greenhouse gas emissions and a general worsening of air quality. We can't ignore the effects of climate change when considering development because this affects the ability of people to work and live. The road network is being overstated. Most roads in the area are two-lane roads with rural cross-section that have the potential of not accommodating the additional commercial vehicles and traffic. The surrounding area is completely inappropriate for cycling, walking, or any other green commuting options. There are no residential areas near the proposed development. There is no effective way to take transit to South Campbell Heights. look at the overall cost to the citizens of Metro Vancouver due to increased injuries from motor vehicle accidents, increased illnesses due to worsening air quality, dry wells and water contamination. You may hear the land in the area, it's impossible to farm, which is simply inaccurate. Our 3.5 acre regenerative farm is absolutely abundant as hundreds of shareholders, local restaurants and food banks will attest. Why are we not considering the agricultural and agro-tourism revenues that can be generated from these lands? urban containment boundary. What is the point of a boundary if the boundary is just going to move? For me, I'm extremely concerned about the precedent that this sets because there are sensitive areas all across the region. Where do we draw the line on this stuff? We need to use the resources within the urban containment boundary before even considering moving into the lands that the members of Metro Vancouver agreed need to be protected. In 2018, I voted for the current mayor for reasons including promises made about the special land use area in question. Now I am here fighting against the same people who made those promises to me. The public does not support this proposal. Mayor McCullen actually promised the people of Surrey in his campaign that they would uphold the urban containment boundary. They had a huge development in South Surrey they wanted to put on the Little Campbell River for heaven's sakes. Again, the community was up in arms and finally Metro Vancouver had to step in and stop the development because it was outside of Surrey's planning. In other words, it was dumb development. The Tatalu of the Little Campbell to the Simiyama people as a living being, as, as an entity that has a life of its own, that's our relative that we 
bring voice to. I just respectfully ask that that opportunity is given to Simiamo to, to speak to concerns. The impacts to food security, access to traditional food sources, water qualities in our traditional territory. My concern is deeper relationship with the City of Surrey to discuss and bring our concerns and our issues to the forefront. Surrey has had four years to address these gaps, but has not done appropriate environmental assessment for any kind of urban development in the area they call South Campbell Heights, and we call the most important rural area left in Surrey. The vote you're going to be making is going to be based on poor and inadequate information, and the outcomes from those decisions you're making today are going to have multi-generational impacts on the future of this watershed. The City of Surrey's proposal to expand industrial development beyond the urban containment boundary is contrary to almost all the goals of Metro 2040-2050. Supporting the application is a vote against sustainable climate action, against biodiversity in salmon, against First Nations consultation and partnership, and against the numerous employers in the area, all operating at a scale that's appropriate for the watershed. 20 years from now, we look back on our actions. Will we be proud or ashamed? The Metro Vancouver Regional Board should reject this proposal. Reject Surrey's proposal to move the urban containment boundary at South Campbell Heights. <laughs>